Praise the Lord. So glad to have you here with me at God's Got a Plan. I believe we have a very good show for you this evening, and I believe the Lord's really going to, let's just say, speak to you tonight, because it's so very important that we understand the importance of not being double-minded. Too many of us are out here, uh, let's just say, caught between a pillow and a, uh, a hard place, a rock and a hard place. Why? Mainly because we're not able to, let's just say, operate in that one mind. You have to be able to, let's just say, organize your thoughts and realize that your thoughts are going to take you in a direction that's going to bring you to that place where you really want to be. I should say the positive thoughts, okay? So let's, let's get going here, and I believe that the Lord will really speak to you tonight. And I'm thankful today because this has helped me, and I believe if it was able to help me, and I know I'm a hard somebody to so let's just say stay on the right course. So the real deal is let's get started and see what God has to say to us tonight. All right. Praise the Lord. Eternal Father, we just pray your blessing. We ask, Father God, that your grace and mercy will continue to abound. Have your way, Lord God, and lead us into all truth. We ask this in Jesus name. Amen and amen. My theme for tonight's show is be of one mind. I'm going to say it again. Be of one mind. And it's so very important because I believe scripture says a uh, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So it's so very important that we, you know, we, we really have our act together, especially in times like this with an economy the way it is, the way uh, our family makeups are, we're blended and all of these different things are going on in our lives, challenges on the job. So many things that are coming up against us to try to break us down. You have to be able to operate in that one mind. Now, in a one mind, when I say one mind, I'm talking about someone who knows what he's doing, someone that has a plan. There's a saying in the world, uh, when you fail a plan, you plan to fail. So you have to be able to operate in that plan. And there's no better plan than God's got a plan for you. I'm here to tell you now, God's plan is always better than your plan. Let's turn with me now to James chapter one, uh, the starting at the fifth verse. And it says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. In other words, God will give you all of what you need. Are you hearing me when it comes to wisdom? Why? Because to tell you the truth, he wants you to be successful. I'm going to say it again, and I want you to understand. He wants you to be successful. God wants you to be successful. You know, why be saved? Why get saved and still be a failure? Are you hearing me? So God didn't bring you into the kingdom. Those of you who are in the kingdom, he didn't bring you into the kingdom for you to be a loser, for you to be a failure. No, he wants you to win at this game called life. You know, I said a, a game called life, but this, this, this game can hurt. This, this game can sometimes lead you into that, let's just say that arena where you don't feel good about yourself. Why? Because we're operating in that double mind. Look at the sixth verse. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In other words, you have to be sure that you sure. In other words, I have to know that I know that I know. Let me put it that way. I have to know that I know that I know that what I'm, let's just say, the information that I'm operating with or in, I know that it works. And there's no better information than the word of God. I'm going to say that again. This word of God will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. The Bible says that God is faithful, and I'm here to tell you, he did it before, he can do it again. And many of you, I'm talking to those of you who are saved, those of you who have already been in the press 
for a period of time, you've been around long enough to know that God has brought you through some stuff. And if he's brought you through some stuff before, he'll bring you through some stuff again. Are you hearing me? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen God turn his back on anyone. Nine times out of ten, we've turned our backs on God. But I'm here to tell you, if you can just get committed, if you can get focused, and if you can operate in that one mind, if you can operate in that one mind, not allow yourself to be, uh, let's just say, turning to the right and to the left. If you remember when Peter was walking on the water and the Bible says as he was walking to Jesus, after he stepped out of that boat and began to walk to Jesus, the Bible says as long as he was looking at Jesus, everything was all right. But the minute he looked at those waves to the right, looked at those waves to the left, as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, the Bible says he began to sink. And many of us are sinking today. Why? Mainly because we're not of operating in that one mind and we're not focused on what we need to be focused on today. So, so the seventh verse says this, for, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Why, why is that? Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, in other words, if you're double-minded in one area, that is going to affect other areas of your life. You have to be able to operate in a sound mind. You know, the Bible says, God have not given you a spirit of fear, but uh, power, love, in a sound mind. You have to operate in a sound mind. If you want to be able to see the success, if you want to be able to see the manifestation of those dreams and those promises of God, if you wanted to be able to, let's just say, to go to the next level, you're going to have to operate in that one mind. I would say stay positive, but I'm not even talking about staying positive because I don't want you to think that I'm talking about new age Christianity or anything like that. No, you have to have the mind of Christ. You have to operate in the mind of Christ. I'm not talking about no, no new age stuff. No, no, no. I want to keep it simple and I want to stay with the book. I want to stay in the word. And that's what we have to do. So what am I saying? When you find yourself confronted with life challenges and the negativity that will come at us, you have to be able to operate in the mind of Christ, knowing in spite of what it looks like, I learned to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And I'm not leaning to my own understanding because sometimes my mind, my mind, my thoughts can take me someplace I don't need to go. This is why we have to stay in the book. This is why we have to know Christ for ourselves. See, it's one thing to know about him, but you have to come to that place in your life where you know him for yourself. Are you hearing me tonight? You have to know him for yourself, and you'll really get to know him real good. When you find yourself going through that trial, when you find yourself going through that problem, when you find yourself at that place of difficulty, I'm here to tell you, he may not come when you want him, but he has a way of showing up right on time. I'm talking about a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. I'm starting to feel real good right about now because I thought I was going to minister to you, but I needed to hear this for myself. Are you hearing me? And that's what this is about. So I want you to understand your, 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 your thinking, your thoughts will always move you in a direction. Are you hearing me? You will move in the direction of your thoughts. I believe in uh, Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And if I was to add anything to that, so shall he become. So it's so very important that you understand that thoughts are things. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible says out of the heart comes the issues of life. So, you know, if you're not happy with where you're at today, you really have to take a look at what's going on in your heart. You have to look at what's going on even in your thoughts. Why? Because thoughts are things. And I believe Paul says, think on those things that are pure, those things that are just, those things that are of a good report. Are you hearing me? We have to be able to, let's just say, flush ourselves of the old self. See, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. In other words, God want to make you over. And in order to make that happen, you have to daily, let's just say now, daily 
daily you're going to have to be able to flush yourself of your old self. Are you hearing me? So look at this in Philippians 4 and 13. Philippians 4 and 13 says this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, if I'm going to do all things through Christ, it's got to be done. It's got to be done through that one mind. It has to be done through that one mind. I, I can't have my mind in and out, up and down. I can't be caught up in a lot of drama. I have to be able to purge myself of myself. Are you hearing me? See, because look at this. Philipp Philippians 1 and 6 says this. Look what Paul says in Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, meaning this one thing. See, being focused, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, he's already begun a good work in you. Those of you who are saved, those of you who have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a shame that so many, so many are not even, let's just say, accessing or allowing themselves to come into that place where they're able to receive the, the benefits of God. You know, I believe David says in Psalms 133 and one somewhere around there, forget not all of God's benefits. There's benefits for being a Christian. There's benefits for being saved. There's benefits when you're able to keep your mind on that one thing, when you're able, my God, to be of one mind. And really, that's what this is about, being of one mind. Why? Because I want to let you know today. Matter of fact, I want to speak right to you today. Let me speak right to you today. According to Romans 8 and 28, this is what it says. And somebody, I know you needed to hear this today. And you know that all things are working together for the good, for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it again. You needed to hear this. And we know that all things are working together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Oh, it's just a beautiful thing to know that God is in the business of reconciling his people. It is a good thing to know that God is, he's, he's really, let's just say, he's in charge of everything. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and everything that dwell in it. So you have to stay in the word. See, if you want to be able to make this thing happen, you're going to have to stay in the word. Are you hearing me? See, the Bible says as you stay in that word, as you read the word of God, the word of God begins to read you. It begins to expose those flaws, those, those areas of your life where you need to, let's just say, tighten up or let's just say, uh, get your act together, whatever way you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, however way you want to, uh, let's just say, put that, you have to be able to stay in the word. Why? Because God is doing a new thing in you. Acts 17 and 11 says this, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. See, in other words, you have to receive that word with a readiness of mind. I want this. I want this. See, and you have to want this. As you want this, I'm here to tell you now, God will move in a very special way because he wants to show you that he is that concerned. He's more concerned about you succeeding than you are. I'm going to say that again. God is more concerned about your success than you are. And he wants you to succeed. He wants you to be able to come to that place in your life where you can see, where you can say that life is worth living. Can you say that today? If you're not able to say that today, you need to do something about it. Are you hearing me? You need to take charge. You need to take control. You need to do something about it because I'm here to tell you God is good. And the Bible said the Thessalonians in Acts 17 and 11, let me read the, the rest of that. It says, and they searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. In other words, they wanted to know for themselves. Are you hearing me? They wanted to know for themselves. 
And you have to be able to research. You have to be able to get into that word. And you need to be able to uncover the mystery. My God, the Bible says, if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Those of us who are walking after the flesh and that being led by the spirit. You want to be led by the spirit, my brother, my sister. You want to be led by the spirit. That's what this is about. A ready mind is open to the will of God. I'm going to say it again. A ready mind, someone that is, let's just say, empty themselves of their old self, someone who is ready to meet the challenges of life. Guess what? My God, my God, God will move in a very special way and he will show you, my God, he will show you that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Did you hear what I said? I said exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think according to the power that is in you. And that power is faith to believe that your God is able to do anything all things but fail. So my brothers and sisters, you can't afford to leave room for doubt. Leave no room for doubt. In order to receive, you have to move into that area of expectation. In other words, I expect something good to happen in my life. I'm expecting God to show up. And if he shows up, I know he's going to show out. I'm expecting to be I'm expecting to believe and to receive, I should say. I'm expecting to receive God's best. Are you hearing me? That's what this is about. You are positioning yourself right now. God is positioning you. He is allowing you to enter into this shift where you're going to be receiving. I'm, I believe that someone out there, you're going to see an answer to your prayer. I believe someone out there is going to see the manifestation of that something that you believe God has laid in your heart. You've been going and you've been struggling. You've been fighting. You've been believing God and you're saying, Lord, what's the hold up? Why is it taking so long? Well, I'm here to tell you, you waiting on God, but God just might be waiting on you. Be of one mind. Be of one mind. See, see, uh, I want you to understand, uh, you know, the, the quickest way to get to a pl to, from one place to another is a straight line. You have to be of one mind. You can't afford to be scattered, scattered in your thinking. You can't afford to be out there just, just trying to figure things out. You have to plan. You have to know what you want to do. And then let me say this. Then you have to move into that place where I expect the miracle to happen. You have to, like I said, you have to live in expectation. I expect the miracle to happen. Why? Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So I'm, I'm, I'm at a place now where I'm just going to believe God for that change. I'm going to believe God for that miracle. I'm going to believe God for the manifestation of that which he's promised me. You know he's promised you some things. And I believe reconciliation of family. He's promised you a job. Somebody's out there believing God for a job. And you've been pounding the pavement. You've been uh, turning out yellow pages and you've been knocking on doors and you've been doing this and doing that. Well, I'm believing God today that he's going to open the door. He's going to lead you to that place of employment. And I'm believing that he's going to do a new thing in you. Are you hearing me? I feel that in my spirit that someone is looking and believing God for employment. And I'm believing that tonight's show, I believe that God is going to utilize this show tonight. My God, my God, to manifest and to bring forth an answer to your prayer. And that prayer is for a job. I'm here to tell you, you're going to get it. Move in expectation. If you can believe it, you can receive it. Are you hearing me? If you can believe it, you can receive it. I don't care when you're watching this show. God is telling me to tell you it's going to happen. Are you hearing me? It's going to happen. What you now have to do is step out in faith, believing my God, my God. Mark 11, 22 says, have faith in God. If you can have faith in God, I'm here to tell you it shall come to pass. Look at first Peter, first Peter three and 10 for he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from speaking evil. In other words, you can't afford to see. 
thoughts are things. And I want you to know, as a man think of in his heart, so is he, so shall he become. In other words, what I'm talking about is what I'm thinking about. I have to be able to flush myself of that old self, that old way of thinking. I have to stop recycling that negativity. I have to stop recycling, you know, that, that, that evil speaking because that's what the Bible calls it. I can't. Nobody know what I'm going through. I can't have. Nobody loves me. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck. We can come up with a, a thousand and one things to say against the, the, the good that God might be trying to do for us today. And I'm here to tell you tonight, God's about ready to bless you if you can just receive it in your spirit. If you can receive it in your spirit. And his lips from refrain from telling lies. In other words, you have to stand out in faith knowing that all things are working together for the good. God loves you. God loves you. And I want you to know he loves you more than you even love yourself. And we can talk about how much we love this life, but when you look at the choices that we've made in this life for ourselves, over ourselves, and even over our loved ones, those that we hold near and dear to our hearts, when you look at some of the choices that we've made, when we look at some of the predicaments and some of the situations we've put other people in, I'm not even talking about ourselves. I'm talking about those people that we say we love. But because we're not able to operate in that one mind, we find ourselves, let's just say, on, on Rough Street, on, on, on Difficult Avenue or Alley, or we're, we're at a dead end, and we're at a place where we just don't know what to do with ourselves, and we just don't know how we're going to make it, and let go of that. You got to let go of that. Remember what I said earlier, Paul said it beautifully, I can, you can do all things through Christ, who strengthens you, who loves you, who wants you to succeed more than you want to succeed yourself. He wants you to succeed. Are you hearing me? Let me give you this other scripture here. In 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 12 says this, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Are you hearing me? The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. In other words, he's, he's, he knows those of us who are, let's just say, who's operating in this word of God. When I say operating, I'm talking about not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. See, that's really what this is about. See, because many, you know, you might know the letter, but you don't have the spirit. See, the letter will bring you into the spirit, and you have to be able to, let's just say, get to that place where you are mature enough to trust God even though things don't look right. Even though you're made to feel, let's just say, uncomfortable, because sometimes we get uncomfortable in, in our walk with the Lord. And I don't understand why things have to go like this and why I have to be challenged with this and challenged with that. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you can operate in that one mind, I'm here to tell you, you'll begin to see some things unfold. You'll begin to see some doors open. Those of you that I told you earlier, I believe, my God, that God's going to bless you with a job in the immediate future. I'm not talking about next month. I'm not talking about next year. I'm talking about the immediate future. Some will walk into a job tomorrow. Some will walk into a job by the end of the week. Some will walk into a job next week. Some will see a job manifest within the month. I'm here to tell you, God's going to make it happen. I'm not sitting up here pretending to be a prophet. No, I'm just telling you what God has put in my spirit. I'm here to tell you, I am a man of God, and I know I lay before the Lord, and I, and I believe God speaks to me and tell me what he would have me say to you. So I'm here to tell you, if you're, if you're believing God for a J-O-B, this is the program you want to see. And what am I telling you tonight? Make sure you're operating in one mind. Just because you knock on a door and let's just say that door don't open or, or you don't see things happening as fast as you want it to, to happen, Trust God. Stand on that word. Don't be moved with doubt. Don't be moved and operate in that what we would call double-mindedness. You have to know that you know that you know. And to tell you the truth, because you are God's gift to the world, because you are God's gift to the planet, I want you to know and understand those who will not 
uh, let's just say hire you, those who would turn you away, they have missed an opportunity to have the best thing going in their office or on their job. And the best thing going is you. Are you hearing me? You have to be able to see yourself the way God sees you. And I want you to know you are somebody special. Are you hearing me? God's trying to shake somebody up tonight. He's trying to get somebody to a place, my God, my God, where you're going to be, ooh, Lord Jesus, I'm so glad I watched God's got a plan tonight. That's what you're going to say. That's what you're going to say. And I know I'm going to be hearing from some of you. Some of you are going to reach out. You're going to call. You're going to Facebook. You're going to email. You're going to YouTube me. Some kind of way you're going to reach out and you're going to say thank you for tonight's program. Why? Because I know that God is speaking to many of you tonight. Praise God. Praise God. So let me pray for you tonight. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for the leading of your spirit. Lord God, those of us, Lord God, that or at that place, Lord God, where we're believing you, Lord God, for that J-O-B, where we're believing you, Lord God, for that open door. Oh, Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will do, Lord God, what needs to be done in the life of your people. Lord God, make a way out of no way. Lord God, I know you're able, Father God, to, to turn their situation around, turn my brother's situation around, Turn my sister's situation around. Bless them as only you can. And Father God, for we will forever be grateful and thankful for all of what you're doing, all of what you've done. And we want to thank you now in advance for what you're going to do. Lord God, that's someone that's trying to even get into school, believing God for uh, higher education, Lord God. But looking at their finances, they don't know how they're going to make it. I'm asking you, Lord God, to be a way maker. I'm praying, Father God, that you will bless, Lord God, with an open door to school. I pray that you will meet the financial obligations and needs of your people. And Lord God, thank you, Father God, for this night, because I believe that tonight is truly a night of divine intervention. And you're going to touch the lives, hearts, minds of your people tonight. And you're going to bring change in their future. And we claim that now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you here. God's got a plan. And like I always tell you, we just want to see you succeed. We want you to live your best life now. We want you to know your life matters, not just to God, but your life even matters to us. And this is why I do what I can do in reference to bringing you a timely word from the Lord. And, and I just thank God for this privilege and this opportunity. So, if, you know, those of you who have been watching the show for some time, you know how to reach me. Just follow the credits at the end of the show. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook. You can reach me, you know, on YouTube. If you want to see any part of this show again or if you want to see the other shows that we put up, just follow us on YouTube at Robert Golson. We love you. Uh, just what can I tell you? Come back and see us again the same time, the same place, and at the same station. All right? God bless you. Love you. Have a good night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And like I said, be of one mind. Be of one mind. Amen. Yes, I believe that.